We got um, this article talking about the Iranian conflict, and then we got um, uh, Trump chipping away at Obamacare more, and World, then this World, one. World War Three was so disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> so what yeah. is your commentary about uh, the assassination, quote-unquote, of Soleimani and the whole Iranian conflict that happened in the recent month or two? I mean, he, it, it kind of seemed like it was necessary, but I'm glad it's not escalating further. Like, it comes to the, you, they cannot be allowed to attack uh, an embassy in a sovereign nation. They can't be allowed to do that. Yeah. That is a, that is an act of war. I, but, I totally but, agree. Uh, so, and Soleimani uh, was been registered as a terrorist for decades now. Yeah, and because of the fact of him being registered as a terrorist, there is an argument to be made that uh, Donald Trump doesn't technically have to uh, officially put out a declaration of war in order to kill, you know, Soleimani. Um, Correct. Well, Obama gave a bunch of drone strike assassinations the same way. I mean, the whole legal precedence of this issue is what is kind of the thing that I have trouble with most. But on the whole, whole ethical and moral case of this, I am – I say that overall Trump did not do wrong. I mean I do hear that he like uh, striked um, uh, civilian centers in Iran as well and fuck him. Yeah, I also he I tweeted just... about that he would, but he never actually did it. And he's a fucking really? dumbass and a disgrace to his office even to tweet something like that, but he didn't end up doing it. You you saw no evidence of uh, civilian centers being striked in Iran. There was no evidence they were. Okay, well if that's true. And, uh, then I cannot find really an area aside from possibly the legal side of things. Yeah, uh, an area Iran to criticize Trump for. Uh, they shot down a Ukrainian jet, killed 173 people. Hmm. Uh, Iran that, shot down what... a Ukrainian jet. Yes, yeah, well, a passenger plane. It was mostly Canadian citizens. Yeah, and I, I can't believe people were trying to shill for Iran though they did it ac accidentally. You don't, you can't really accidentally shoot down a passenger plane. I don't go out in my front yard, uh, fart in the wind, and accidentally shoot down a passenger plane. That really requires direct intent. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I do have to say that uh, I don't even think that a declaration of war an official declaration of war with iran is necessarily is necessarily re required i think that's just the mere this kind of mild or fairly mild retaliation against iran that being killing soleimani w is the least that could have uh, been done but a continuing conflict with trump iran i don't think is necessary they wanted trump to have his own benghazi Thank thankfully uh he does not trump handled that way better than obama but did in 2012. yeah uh, obama obama's reaction to uh that attack on that embassy was fucking disgraceful yeah it was all because I, I, of a bigoted cartoon yeah that was disgusting Fu he destroyed america's legacy probably forever with his disgraceful speech to the u.n condemning a fucking cart a, a, a youtube video it basically was apologizing for free speech and fuck him for that mm -hmm. um continuing on with this so we're not going to be talking about the iranian conflict itself so much but how supposedly that isis has a uh, opening uh according to dailymail.co.uk uh, as the title of the article goes, ISIS welcomes the death of Iran's Qasim Soleimani and declare it an act of divine intervention that will let them regroup in Iraq. ISIS believes the death of Soleimani will allow them to regroup in Iraq once more. The U.S.-led coalition had been holding them back up until Iran's recent standoff. Iraq's European and American allies uh, have been pausing training operations since. You're saying, Loudmouth? Well, yeah, ISIS is a Sunni organization. Uh, Iran's mostly Shia. Right. That's kind of why they've been in conflict. And I just have to say, right off the bat, just looking at this article, fuck both of them. I'd say that both of them should be gone. I mean, I don't think that we should like we should have hold hold back on Soleimani because he's like working as a uh, as an enemy against against ISIS. 
The enemy of my enemy is not always my friend. And in this case, he was definitely not a friend of ours. He was but an enemy as he shown than... in striking that embassy and killing an American contractor and killing over 600 U.S. soldiers over the course of the last couple decades. You're saying... All, all, that's, tr all that's true. Um, but uh, you also have to look at when our enemies are fighting each other, they're uh, expending resources that could otherwise harm Americans. Right. So, well, like one of the big faults in the Iraq war was removing Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein may have been a brutal, evil son of a bitch, but he was an enemy of the Iranians, and the Iranians fight, uh, fighting, uh, fighting Iraq was kind of limiting both their power. In clear way, what Iran's trying to do now is in the absence of, of a strong Iraq, they, uh, what they want to be able to control Iraq and control the region. They've been working towards that goal for over 40 years. Right. I do want to add the caveat that if uh, an enemy of ours is not actively attacking us and really they're just actively attacking another enemy of ours, well, then there's no real need to, like, um, to intervene and kill said enemy. But in this case, they were not just leaving us untouched whilst fighting another enemy of ours. They right, were true. attacking they us. They were yeah. attacking our embassy, and that required way, uh, retaliation. Kidding. So Trump made the right move there. But it's just a mm. general principle. Yeah, it, it is important to note that. Um, you got to look at like the politics of the region. Yeah, we take out this one guy who, yeah, he may we may not like him, but who's going to replace him? Who it could be somebody worse? Exactly. Or uh, or who is this guy fighting with? They could be people worse than him. Yada yada yada. It's, uh, there's so many uh, complex variables. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's um, it's uh, quite important that we lay out all nuance and principles regarding to uh, military interaction because I, uh, I know that the last video that I posted talking about uh, how I am glad that Soleimani got killed that did not get received uh, very well. I mean, relatively speaking to the rest of my videos, anyways. I mean, it still has like a better rating than, uh, you know, than it, it still got an overall positive rating, but still. Uh, so who knows, I might get some backlash for this. I mean, particularly from the more stricter non-interventionists in my subscriber base. After the assassination of Soleimani, the, de the head of the Iran's elite Quds force, uh, Quds, Quds, however you pronounce that, the U.S.-led coalition tasked with holding back ISIS in Iraq paused all operations, turning it itself instead on Iranian aggression directed towards America. I mean, here's the thing. As shitty as I think that ISIS is, and as much as I think that they should be absolutely destroyed, at the very moment, around the time of us killing Soleimani, ISIS had not been actively attacking us. It had been a while since they had the, uh, staged the, uh, you know, the last attack against us. So I do think that there is like strategic precedent to direct more of the resource to the person who was actually directly attacking us. That being Soleimani, just my. But it could be. But uh, one of the reasons ISIS hasn't attacked us recently is because they've been uh, in conflict with a bunch of other powers in the region, and when you weaken those powers, uh, ISIS could rise up and become more powerful in their place, or redivert that power to other priorities. Possibly, it, like it says, it, 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 there's no e there are no easy decisions in this this game. Yeah, I guess that's uh, fair enough. Although I I think that I don't know maybe what, it, what, we, our forces could have be? done both, but I don't know. The the threads that hold society together. That's why that is. The, you you cut one and then the whole thing can fall to pieces. Mm. The you, yeah, you call, you take one person out of power, and then yada yada, the cascading effect. Although this one did not actually uh, lead to the threads movie, thankfully. Oh, I, I didn't think that was likely. I, though my YouTube video did get a big boo boost in uh, views from when that conflict was all over the news. <laughs> well, congratulations, and I will. Uh, yeah. Also say, by the way, that me personally, I wasn't really so afraid of World War III because Iran does not have any super close allies that we would have inadvertently pissed off if we fought Iran. It's not like Iran is to Russia like Syria is. 
or Iran is to China like North Korea is, you know? No, yeah, I, w- I wouldn't. At, that at was worst, clearly hyperbole. At worst, I would have suspected something along the same lines of George Bush's uh, Iraq, uh, Iraq war. George Bush Jr.'s, I mean. Yeah, I, I don't think most serious people didn't really think it would uh, lead to World War III. It was pro- that was probably just kind of fear mongering, but a lot of people naturally get nervous, and they. I, I, it's probably a good thing that they are that because the, as I mentioned in my Threads video, it's fear that keeps us alive. Mm-hmm. Great. That, that is why we feel the emotion of fear. It it's the most basic survival instinct we have. We have. It's fear that prevents us from jumping off a cliff because we're afraid of the consequences. Yep. Great Hound 2 says it's very telling when people holding a memorial for a terrorist. Yeah, that's really pitiful. Although, I think that's more the Iranian government more than the Iranian people. But, uh, yeah, it's still shitty. I mean, but from what I generally hear anyways... I'm going to go hit the stack, dude. I'll talk to you later. All right, sorry that I did not get along this faster, but uh, see you at Bloodmouth. Uh, have a good one. In the weekly ISIS newspaper, in ISIS newspaper Al Naba, the extremists said that while their enemies were fighting each other, draining energy and resources, the, jih- the jihadists would be able to regroup, according to the BBC. A few days after the attack, NATO pulled some personnel from the country, explaining that the safety of our personnel is paramount. After fears were raised that the Islamic Republic uh, could lash out at Westerners in Iraq after the hit. Okay, and I do want to say that since Soleimani is dead, that Iran is no longer that much of a threat, currently speaking anyways. And we should, like, redirect some more of our forces, some more of our efforts towards, you know... uh, against uh isis now that that part of the conflict is done uh so as to not let them get away with much although if we could i would like both destroyed really uh soleimani which soleimani is dead right now and the uh and isis both germany extracted all military training personnel from iraq to jordan and kuwait these uh These personnel, along with other European allies, were in Iraq tasked with training the country's security forces to stop the extremists regrouping in the region after they were finally vanquished in December 2017. I mean, that seems to be a little bit of a moot point right there. I mean, didn't Iraq kind of want us to get out of the country anyways? I mean, because if that is really the case, well then, it's probably for the best that we got out of uh, Iraq even whether or not it was just for the spur of the moment response to Soleimani. Despite the recent lull in aggression from both Iran and U.S. President Donald Trump, Iraq's Shia militias have pledged to avenge Soleimani's uh, death. Iraq's Shia militias. Well, if they go uh, fighting us, well then fuck them too. Um, there's a whole bunch of videos here. I'm, okay. I find Daily Mail to be a reliable source for news, but they are just a complete and utter mess with their layout. I'm just saying. The Popular Mobilization Forces, PMF, a state-sponsored umbrella organization composed of some 40 independent Shia militia groups, have pledged to drive U.S. forces from the region and have not opted out of attacking Western personnel as Iran are alleged to have done with their botched missile strike. This bodes well for the Sunni extremists who were only stopped by a two-year campaign carried out by a U.S.-led coalition advising the Iraqi army, according to the BBC. I will say that I do not really see the the need for us to be in Iraq itself. I mean, Iraq, for one, is like a pretty... um, pretty small country in of itself we could like uh get ourselves down to uh kuwait or jordan instead and we'd still be like in a fair proximity of isis uh you know isis activity to be able to respond to them if they'd gone like you know attacking so yeah just for the sake of like avoiding any um any unrest with uh, p- natives of iraq uh i don't really see why we should actively be in there I mean, unless ISIS was actually actively attacking us from Iraq. 
If they were attacking us from Iraq, well, then I would see the precedent for us to be in Iraq. But I haven't been hearing much about that, but I digress. Uh, instead of being, like, in the uh, country that is, where relations are dicey, be in more of the countries of where that we do have ally uh, alliances with. Except for Saudi Arabia. Fuck them. S fuck Saudi Arabia. That's, a, that's an unholy alliance that I want purged, personally. In December 2017, three years after the extremists commandeered a third of the country, then-Iraqi Prime Minister Haider al-Abadi um, announced that the extremists had been driven out. Uh, according to the BBC, they still stomp across the lives of thousands in areas where they first uh, laid their roots. Less open combat, combat and more guerrilla tactics. The ISIS machine could start once more should the U.S. coalition be hampered in its attempts to stop them. Iraqi and Kurdish news uh, feature grisly murders, reports of extortion and ambushes on Iraqi forces with increasing regularity. Those Iraqi security forces who developed into a semi-elite fighting force because of U.S. and European training are now in a difficult position since the U.S. coalition paused its operations. And I do want to say that I do give every ounce of my verbal support, at least verbal support anyways, to the Kurds fighting against ISIS. Because uh, not only are they fighting against ISIS, but there's also the fact that they allow females to fight in their ranks. And... It's not the fact that they happen to be female as to why that I uh, as to why that I praise the Kurds. It's because of the fact that ISIS, you know, uh, they if they were to get killed by female, apparently according to ISIS's denomination of Islam, if they are to get killed by a female, they are definitely doomed for hell in that of it, in of itself, which is kind of funny. Uh, I just uh, remember like uh reading an article about that and I thought it was freaking funny or at least the title of an article for that and if that is true well then all the more I give praise to the Kurds epic says invisible ham hand I would say yes um, invisible hand also says makes you wonder if Islam would be better off if a reformation took place Christianity and Judaism had them uh, yeah I would say that be for the best if Islam was to have a reformation. And Crusader's in the chat. Hello, Crusader. He says, uh, fuck Iran, and I cannot sympathize more. I think the Iranian people were there more as a requirement by their governments, as Invisible Hand, uh, referring more to the memorial done for Soleimani, I think. Um, that's why they hate Israel, LOL, says Reckless Trucker. I think he's referring to my comment about how ISIS... Uh, believes that um, uh, if you get killed by a woman, you're damned to hell. Anyway, the BBC reported that once ISIS took control of Mosul in 2014, the PMF were rallied by Soleimani and, I and Iraq's chief cleric, Grand Ayatollah Ali al-Sistani, uh, who, uh, who told them to drive the fight to the Sunni extremists. Since then, the PMF went on a brutal campaign of reaping against the Sunni extremists. According to the BBC, the death of Soleimani would have been a sight to uh, to celebrate for the headliners. Yep, I agree. And so that is, in fact, the end of the article. And I do have to say that it was very enlightening. It was very informative as to how that, uh, to all the strict anti-interventionists, that yes, we have killed one enemy and that kind of gave an opening to another enemy. But to all the strict anti-interventionists, I mean, sorry. Sorry if this makes you want to dislike my stream right now. But I don't really care that much. If an enemy is actively killing us, that being Soleimani, then fuck them. And we'll take ISIS, who sees an opening, we'll take them as we go. Okay? Alright. 